Now we're off to our last panel, our fifth panel, moderated by my wonderful colleague Regina Bittner, and I will introduce Regina briefly. She is head of the Bauhaus Dessau Foundation Academy and responsible for the conception and teaching of postgraduate programs of design, Bauhaus, and architectural research. Her work fo focuses on international architecture and urban research, modernity and migration, the cultural history of modernity and heritage studies. She curated numerous exhibitions on the Bauhaus and the cultural history of modernism, as you all know, of course, uh, the current uh, exhibition upstairs as well, together with Wolfgang Thöner and Dorothee Brill. The results of her research and teaching have been published in numerous publications. I would like to mention three of them. Um, the Bauhaus in Calcutta, an account of cosmopolitan avant-garde in 2013. Craft becomes modern, the Bauhaus in the making from 2017, and recently design rehearsals, conversations about Bauhaus lessons 2019. She studied cultural studies and art history at the University of Leipzig and earned her doctorate at the Institute of European Ethnology at the Humboldt University in Berlin. Among, yeah, I've said that already. So um, very warm welcome to Regina, but before I give her the microphone, I would like to remind you that we will have another coffee break from 3.30 till 4, so enough time to discuss a couple of matters um, further. And then after that, we'll have a special tour by my colleague uh, Monika Markgraf in the historic Bauhaus building before we come back um, for the final bit of our conference, the Bauhaus birthday celebration. So now, please welcome Regina Bittner. Yeah. Thank you very much for this kind invitation, Florian, and thanks for organizing such a fantastic conference. Um, yeah, so this will be the last panel for this um, quite interesting um, uh, symposium we had here in the new museum. And I'm very happy to um, guide you through that um, last panel. Um, before we start, as you al already um, realized, it's about the visibility of the global. So in a way, we will certainly um, trace some of the topics that will be discussed in this last panel back to a couple of uh, questions and themes we have already discussed in the morning, but also yesterday. So um, this is always uh, the constellation. If you are the last panel, uh, certain things will certainly uh, reoccur. But on the other hand, we could probably also have the opportunity to, to deepen some of these aspects. Before we start content-wise, um, why this is probably we could shed a lens on uh, some additional aspects uh, in this panel. Um, and we have to certainly conceive the avant-garde uh, from its very beginning as a cosmopolitan project. Um, and that meant um, it's been, the Bauhaus is one of the uh, cultural articulations as a response already to um, early globalization conditions. And that meant um, it is already hard to say um, there is a place and there are conditions and there is a kind of a, a certain frame uh, of a, of a um, cultural articulation in a territory, but we should rather cult conceive cultural articulations as always uh, sort of um, made out within entanglements, conversations, um, topics of transfer and exchange, that's what we have, you have discussed already this morning. Um, what is interesting is that um, since specifically in the centenary, um, these aspects of the Bauhaus as a transcultural um, cosmopolitan um, encounter has been certainly um, emphasized in the, in the exhibition project um, Bauhaus Imaginista and uh, I think a lot of other research and archival works um, has also investigated this much more in depth. And that's why this is probably also such an interesting aspect from nowadays um, uh, topics in regard to how do we deal with and navigate between the global and the local under the conditions of the 21st century. And while in the scholarly uh, sort of academia, um, we have developed concepts to grasp in art history, in global history, in architecture history, uh, those kind of dimensions with terms like cultural transfer um, or entangled, um, entangled histories or terms like um, 
uh, traveling uh, sort of routes um, instead of routes with uh, double O, um, and conversations, zones of contact. So there are a lot of terms that tries to capture that in the architectural as well as design and art history under the umbrella of global art history. Um, it is rather complicated for the curatorial practice um, to capture and to exhibit these moments um, uh, in history. And I think Mr. Ariadne Srat uh, this morning, uh, we got already an idea um, how to translate something like those stories, his stories, um, plural his stories into a global framework. So this is just to say what will be in a way also the scope of our discussion in uh, in the afternoon. And uh, now I'm, I'm very happy to introduce our, our first speaker, Zui Zhang. Um, she is assistant uh, director of the China Design Museum. Um, Ah, I thought I see already the image of the museum here. Uh, and uh, there is, she is also the head of the research department at the Art Museum of the China Academy of Art. She has studied art history um, at the uh, China Academy of Art. Um, and she is currently also working beside her quite busy job at that museum. Uh, and I had the pleasure to meet her twice or even three times um, uh, in Hangzhou um, and despite this busy job as uh, one of the important curators for the museums uh, she's also um, working on her doctorate on her PhD which is revolving around um, the Bauhaus modernism and in, in its Chin Chinese conversations and entanglements so I'm, I'm very glad to have you here Zui and um, yeah and the floor is yours Okay, good afternoon. I'm very delighted to be here and thank uh, the Bauhaus Foundation to invite me and give me so uh, warm hospitality. Um, so firstly, I, I want to show something about our museum because many, uh, many guests here uh, are very curious. This is the building uh, of our museum designed by uh, Avro Caesar. Okay, this is, uh, uh, and uh, on the left top is the campus of the China Academy uh, designed by Wang Shu, the first Chinese uh, won the Pritzker Prize. Um, okay. And uh, actually, we uh, we did uh, many international design exhibitions with all um, different disciplines. So I just get an architecture, industrial design, uh, graphic, costumes, uh, too many in this uh, uh, one year, uh, one and a half year. We, uh, our museum just uh, opened uh, in last year, April 2018. But before that, we uh, got an exhibit, uh, got a collection of m modern Western design from the Hangzhou city municipal government. So we show those uh, objects in our permanent exhibitions. Uh, inside, we have some uh, uh, Bauhaus objects too and uh, other modern uh, design works, chairs. So um, actually, uh, um, my lecture today is uh, not about the collection in our museum. It's some new research by me. Uh, it's mainly about how was Bauhaus design disseminated through the manufacture of anonymous objects in China in the first half of the 20th century. During that time, although Bauhaus derived designs were made in China, there was no crediting of the Bauhaus of its designers. Indeed, only a few Chinese intellectuals had an, any knowledge of the German design school and its associates of, uh, or introduced the work of Bauhaus to others. Nevertheless, look, this is a uh, um, magazine in 1931. The modern design ideology pioneered at the Bauhaus had a widespread influence on Chinese modern life through the adoption of its pioneering concepts. 
albeit in any anonymous and materialist way. Consequently, the Bauhaus was very influential to the localized uh, modernity in China. However, this silent, anonymous, and materialist de dissemination of Bauhaus design has until now largely been ignored. Okay. The work of Bauhaus designers also featured in, muse uh, in images from the West that were used in Chinese mass media, and this helped establish the idea of a fashionable Western modern look amongst China's urban bourgeoisie. Meanwhile, tubular steel furniture designed by Bauhaus designers was being imported into China. Soon, Chinese factories began producing similar furniture pieces, directly copying Western modern designs, but at the beginning, while utilizing the same production technologies Okay, this is uh, my case study on a company, the Dyward uh, Steel fa Furniture f Factory. It is a very uh, typical example of the Chinese company producing modernist designs, in which Bauhaus designs were always chosen as representative staple pro products. Several furniture pieces that had uh, originally been designed by Marcel Breuer were, for, uh, for instance, featured on the factory's posters or found in its catalogs. Founded in 1923, Dyward produced furniture for hospitals, hotels, libraries, banks, and companies in Shanghai, as well as other Chinese cities. Its products were also sold in other parts of Southeast Asia by expatriate Chinese dealers located there. Dyward also had organized several exhibitions to showcase the range of tubular steel furniture it produced. This is uh, um, uh, the, the view of the exhibition. Dyward was not the only Chinese company involved in the production of modern tubular steel furniture. Other manufacturers included uh, the Charles Chang, steel furniture factories, uh, it also based in Shanghai. The output of Dyward uh, was reliant on imported production materials, namely steel. Correspondingly, its Bauhaus-derived products had to be redesigned in accordance with the Chinese market, which needed costs to be lowered. When one compares uh, the B34 chair found in Tonet's catalog with the Chinese version of this design produced by Daiwad, some differences are immediately obvious. For instance, the Chinese version eliminated, uh, eliminates the possibility of the sitter overturning the chair backwards through lengthening the base section uh, on the one, the point one. Um, and uh, besides, uh, its seat is also deeper while the fabric materials used for the seat back and arms were also modified according to local needs and demands. In fact, this is not a unique case of reproducing and uh, improving the Tonet tubular furniture just mentioned by Suzanne and other scholars. Unlike Tonet, which, credit, uh, which uh, credited its designers by name in its catalog, Dyward only stated in the, the advertisement for its tubular steel furniture that it had been, quote, well designed by famous furniture specialists, quote. There was neither name crediting of the original prototype designer nor the local Chinese designer who had adapted it. This shows that the Chinese entrepreneurs of the time were not really interested in signature design. In fact, the profession of 
design was unknown in China by the general public during that time, but this is not the only reason of anonymization. The concepts of modern design began to ro take root and flourish in China through the imitation and improvement of Western designed tubular steel furniture. Here are a number of uh, uh, its contemporary comments that show how modern design concepts were taking hold in China. For example, quote, harmony is essential for design, for structure, harmony means to organize all components holistically for architecture when designing interiors and furniture, one must build the relationship between each other's um, and uh, the furniture, uh, quote, uh, furniture design principles, the least amount, uh, amount of material used, best dy uh, dynamic strength, and so many you can see <laughs> yourself. These homegrown design concepts have much in common with the modernist principles advocated by the Bach Häuslers. Chinese made redesigns of existing Western tubular steel furniture followed those principles. You, uh, as you see, this is a Chinese design, the draft. Uh, a lot of the examples of these designs are now conserved in Shanghai uh, by a private collector. Okay, this is uh, the collection. Uh, from the late 1920s to the early 1940s, there was a big market for tubular steel furniture in ch China, examples of which were widely featured in the newspapers of the time. For the Chinese, however, this type of furniture was viewed so highly exotic in terms of material, technology, and form. So, given this, why was it so readily ac accepted by Chinese consumers during that time? One reason is uh, interconnection between the steel industry and then government's preparations for war. From the mid-1920s to the end of 1930s, in order to get ready for the outbreak of wholesale uh, hostilities, the Chinese Nanking uh, KMT government acquired a lot of military materials and technology, technological um, raw materials from Germany. In turn, German industrialists um, promoted Germans, Ger Germany's modern manufacturing culture through what was termed industrial diplomacy. The Chinese realized that the manufacturing ca capability of their steel industry was the most vital element for winning a modern uh, international war. So uh, Chinese industrialists proposed that Chinese steel furniture industry could be quickly adapted as a valuable manufacturing resource for the military if the war broke out. Conversely, it was argued that the manufacture of steel furniture could help mitigate overcapacity within military, uh, military industrial production during peacetime. Besides, a flourishing steel industry would provide cheaper materials for both the manufacture of the furniture and the weaponry. This, is, uh, uh, this was the strategy. The seamless steel, the seamless steel tube used for the production of Bauhaus chairs was known as the industrial blood vessel. Um, but China's factory were not then capable for mass produ producing tubular steel until 1953. As you see, Chinese then 
were so happy to have the first factory of the mass production of the steel um, in 1930s. However, Daiwold managed to acquire the technologies for producing seamless steel pipe, but only in a small quantity, as well as the capacity uh, capability to chrome and nickel plate this new wonder material, therefore promoting tubular steel furniture made by Chinese manufacturers would not only boost national self-confidence, benefit the, national, uh, the nation in terms of providing well-designed, well-made in expensive furniture to the people, but also strengthen national defense and economic security. Another reason for the widespread acceptance of tubular steel furniture in China was the Bahas products, uh, the Chinese version, quickly became identified as typical, quote, domestics. Um, it means domestic goods within China. In fact, the Chinese idea of a domestics movement was influenced by similar initiatives found in various Western economies, uh, also uh, Japan, but was especially, especially inspired by the Tengebürter für Industrie in Germany. Uh, such movements, such movements were um, nationalist and patriotic in spread, and many of their members supported revolutionary political groups in China. So the role of the Bauhaus within Western design in, is very intriguing under such situation. The domestics movement was intended to develop and expand national industry, and as such uh, was promoted by the KMT government and various NGOs. In order to differentiate domestics from foreign imported designs or local wares made using traditional crafts, the term domestics was use, used specifically to refer to the modern manufactured products made by Chinese companies. According to the Provisional Standard for Domestics Act passed by the KMT government in 1928, the Bauhaus, uh, quote, Bauhaus steel furniture produced by Diawalt was deemed a legally uh, real domestics type pr product because it was made with Chinese capital and by Chinese workers, technicians, and managers. Was there a problem about copyright? Yes and no. Uh, the practice of creating improved imitations and the behavior of copycat foreign trademarks both exi existed in China, but they are different. Uh, the Chinese lawmakers tried to distinguish the two types of practices. In 1902, while Zhang Zhidong, um, the reformer and minister of Qing Dynasty, was compelled to negotiate patent rights with Western countries, mostly America and uh, Great Britain, he claimed that there was a great gap between China's industrial capacity and that of the West. So it was not fair to directly apply the Western law of patent in China. The Chinese government, therefore, would not forbid imitation or learning from the West per se, while it still protected certain trademark rights. With regards to this, terms of patents could be shortened and also considered as provisional. That's why the act called provisional. So as a strategy for buying time for China's industrial growth, this policy was compatible with international conventions in the long run, and the Western countries accepted 
this strategy lo uh, lost it and had been adjusted throughout the first half of the 20th century in China. Here we could fi also find this historical root of the intellectual property in current um, Sino-US trade friction. This strategy confronts uh, China with challenges and crisis either at home or abroad. So actually China now is trying to um, trying to change the old strategy through severely um, um, penalizing the copycatting and ac academic fraud. As a consequence, those anonymous Bauhaus products were presented as a legally compliant domestics at trade fairs and in publications were even introduced into China's rural market through uh, traveling exhibitions. Some women's magazines and children's books also published re re relevant photographs or illustrations of dye walls products. The appeal of these modern industrial goods was widely promoted for social and political benefit, yet the culture and aesthetics of these products were far remote from Chinese tradition. Could they have been really widely accepted by Chinese consumers? Thanks to the domestic movement alongside the related better homes, quote, the better homes and um, new woman movement, urban residents gradually came to accept the modernist aesthetics represented by Bauhaus inspired designs. Meanwhile, these modern objects came, became um, potent symbolic icons of the new family and the new woman. The discussion that focused on improving Chinese homes began in 1910s and was related to marriage policy, female rights, co-education, and wider family education. The movement mostly concentrated on the art and science of family dwellings and advocated making domestic interiors, uh, quote, clean, austere, and artful. Uh, around this time, many images of Western residences, which often featured Bauhaus tubular steel furniture, was public, uh, were published in magazines. The Better Home exhibitions, look, this is the opening uh, um, picture, that were held twi twice in 1935 and 1937, respectively, were, which were uh, dubbed as, quote, the museums for modern homes and commercial art and crafts, quote. Their exhibitors included, among others, Die Ward, the Deutsche Werkstätten, Siemens, Richard Pollock's modern home design studio. While admiring the exhibition, the Chinese visitors had been worrying about the, the cultural uh, colonization in the meanwhile. Despite the ambivalent attitudes, Chinese people not only gradually accepted the, the, the lifestyle and aesthetics of the West, but also generated their own modern concepts. Those concepts coincided with the ideas of Bauhaus, which were to unify art and technology, to act with sense and reasoning, to tr uh, truthfully use materials, and to design or, uh, for ordinary people. Although uh, originating from the discussion surrounding the need for um, the movement Better Homes and New Woman Movement quickly turned into the promotion of the value of each individual as a result of social reform that was precipitated by the uh, industrial development, it projected an image of women who were economically self-sufficient, healthy, and who had an independent awareness of politics and aesthetics. A typical example of this being the female 
characters found in the New Woman movie of 1934. This is uh, the movie too. You can see the tubular chair. As the embodiment of the new woman and their new lifestyle, many film actresses advocated modern aesthetics. To this end, they were shown using more utilitarian, simple, functional designs instead of art deco finishing to avoid the criticism of material extravagance. Um, as you see, uh, she, she Lai, uh, the actress, she was very um, uh, famous in 1930s, and uh, this is uh, her room. Um, on the other hand, they had to choose domestics to express their political consciousness. According to uh, the picture, um, uh, those objects were uh, had many differences with the original one. So um, I think it's um, they are uh, the um, Chinese version. Uh, and as such, the anonymous Bauhaus furniture made by Chinese manufacturers was seen to be their best choice. Following those female stars, ordinary Chinese women preferred to take photos with the furniture of Bauhaus design, and those anonymous Bauhaus furniture often featured in posters and calendars. More than anything else, the promotion of domestics, um, the provisionary, uh, provisional patent policy, the industrial strategy, the lifestyle reform, and the new woman movement, all, all of them revealed that the Chinese at that time were struggling between colonization and anti-colonization, tradition and modernity, nationalism and internationalism. When, when China was confronting the Western um, colonialism of politics, uh, economics, and culture. It was only way to make mod modernizing reforms to attain justifi justifiability in China by locally co-opting modernity. Modern technology, aesthetics, and policy reform had to be disconnected um, ideolo uh, ideologically w uh, from the West through anonymization or reinvention, or uh, you, you can call it improvement, so that they could then acquire a distinctive local identity and thereby achieve widespread acceptance in China. Actually, the story has another part after 1953. Um, since China had changed its economic, economic system, uh, everyone knows this history, so d despite the opposite uh, ideology and regime with the West, a lot of industrial architecture and workers' uh, uh, apartments had been built with modern prefabricated uh, technology in 1950s and 1960s. Chinese architects adopted the Bauhaus principles on the design of interior and furniture. Among them, there were the Chinese students of Bauhauslers. This uh, cantilever, you can see, uh, even featured in the catalog of the industrial achievement of uh, PRC in its, uh, for its uh, first 10 years. Uh, it's very um, official um, propaganda catalog. Um, there are only two photos of the residential interior design published in this catalog, and this is the one of them. However, the name of Bajas was still uh, nearly anonymized during that time, but because of very different uh, reasons. Okay, the, the, but this is uh, too long, uh, another story, so I think uh, I will stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>